tonight to our Sunday night service. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we look up to you tonight for guidance, Lord. We look up to you for wisdom, Lord. But most of all, we look up for you for the anointing, Lord. What is the anointing that breaks the yoke, Lord? God, I pray that every everything that will be said and done tonight, you will use it to bring people to Jesus Christ, to touch the heart and the mind and the soul of someone, Lord, that they will open their hearts and they will receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Lord. That's the desire, Lord, of our hearts, Lord. And that's the reason why we have come and gathered together in this building tonight, Lord, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We I thank you, Lord. For we know your promise, Lord, that you said in your word that your word will never come back to you void, but you always will accomplish the purpose that you send it forth, Lord. I know that you have a purpose for this service tonight, so we thank you for all that you're going to do, and we give the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Precious Jesus, like we usually do on Sunday night, we preach first and then we worship a little bit later. I want to read a few verses from Matt. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. It's a very familiar story. I want to read the whole story, and then I make a few points from it. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Thank you, Jesus. We read this. On the same day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Verse 36. Now when they have left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. 37. And a great windstorm arose, and the wave beat on the boat so that he was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on the pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Verse 40. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? 41. And they fear exceedingly. And they said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You know, if there is one word that we can describe the Christian life, I think I would choose the, the word journey. The Christian life is a journey. You know, from the moment a person surrenders their life to Jesus, from the moment they accept him as Lord and Savior, from the moment, like the Bible tells us, that we become born again, our Christian life becomes a journey. And as we look at the story, we can learn a few things that we can expect from this journey. See, the disciple went through, and we are going to go through most likely the same thing that they went through. Going back to verse 35, verse 35, he said, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over on the other side. The first thing that we can expect in this journey is there, it's a journey and Jesus is with us. It's not a journey that God expects us to do alone, but it's a journey that he promised to us to be with us. Notice what he said, let us cross over on the other side. He did not tell the disciples, you go ahead. You cross over on the other side. But Jesus said, let us. So as we travel in this journey, as we walk in this Christian journey that we are in, we have the promise of his presence. Let us. Remember Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. 
Jesus said, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Jesus made a promise to disciples, and the same promise applied to us. He said, I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you alone. I will not forsake you, but I'm going to be with you until the end of the ages. And he does the same promise in Hebrew chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrew 13, 5. He said, I shall never leave you. I shall never forsake you. So as we walk in this journey, as we keep going forward day after day, one thing we got to keep in mind and one promise we have that Jesus is walking along with us. Remember, he said that he told the disciple, let us cross over in the other, on the other side. The second thing that we learn from this story is the promise of his fellowship on the other side. Jesus did not bring the disciple on the other side and then left him there. And he departed to go a different place. But Jesus promised to them, we're going to go over on the other side. And when we reach on the other side, I'm going to remain and I'm going to be with you. John chapter 17, verse 24. John 17, 24. Thank you, Jesus. John 17. Father, this is the prayer that Jesus prayed to the Father before the cross. He said, Father, I desire that they also, whom you gave me, might be with me where I am, that they might behold my glory, which you have given me. For you love me before the foundation of the world. Jesus is a father. I walk with them for this time. My journey is almost over. My journey is closing to the end. But one thing I promise and one thing I'm asking to you, Father, that where I am, they might be also. I want the journey to continue on the other side. See, some people think, what happened when we die? What happened when our hearts stop beating and we go six feet down on the ground? Is the journey over? No. The, if, if you read in the scripture, the Bible describes death as sleep. It does not describe death as the end. The body goes to sleep temporarily, but the soul and the spirit continue life with Jesus. In his presence. So the journey continue also on the other side. Remember in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Paul said this, Then we who are alive, he speaks about the rapture of the church when Jesus is going to come and we are going to be caught up. We are going to be snatched out of the earth and we are going to meet him in the air. Then he who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud. Know that to meet the Lord in the air. He's going to be waiting for us in the air. And we shall always be with the Lord. See, we begin the journey on this earth. But then when, life, when this life is over or when Jesus is going to come to take the bride home, we are going to continue the journey together with him. I want you to know we shall always be with the Lord forever. Any place Jesus goes, we are going to go with him. Any blessing that Jesus enjoys, we are going to enjoy with him because we never are going to be separated with them. We shall always be with the Lord. You know something else? As we look at the story, it's a journey that promised you and I a safe passage. We are going to make it on the other side. In John chapter 10, 
verse 28 and 29. John chapter 10, verse 28 and 29. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Precious Lord, hallelujah. John 10, verse 28. Said, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. We will never perish. Remember, death is not the end. When we die, we go into a better place. Our life goes on. I give them eternal life. Eternal life has no ending. Eternal life continues forever. And we have eternal life already in us. The moment we believe and we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, he gave eternal life to us. He said, I gave them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Jesus said, I got them in my hand, and nothing and no one, who well, and what shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing. No one can separate the believer from the hands of God. We are on a journey, and we are promised that we are going to finish the journey, and we are going to go safe. He will deliver safe on the other side. Verse 29. Verse 29. My Father who has given them to me, the Father has given you and I tonight who are in this room, and anyone who is listening to, to me or anyone who is a true believer, the Father is giving us to Jesus as a gift. My Father who has given them to me is greater than whole. It doesn't matter what life has in store for you and I. It doesn't matter what the enemy brings against us. The Father is greater than anything that might come against us. And no one, no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. We're not only hard in the hands of Jesus, but we, but we also hard in the Father's hand. And no one, no one can snatch us out of Jesus' hand and the Father's hand. As Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, the beginner and the finisher of our faith. That's what we do. We keep our eyes on Jesus. We don't keep our eyes, to, we don't look to the right, with, to the left, but we keep our eyes on Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Our faith began with Jesus. Our faith continuing with Jesus. And our faith will always be in Jesus who for the joy that was before him endured the cross, despite his shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we are on a journey. Jesus is with us. We are guaranteed there we are going to get safe to the other side. But the journey that we are in is not a journey exempt from trial. Let me say again. The journey we are in is not a journey exempt from trial and tribulation. Let's go back to the story. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Mark 4, 36. Now when, when they have left the multitude, they took him along in the boat. Remember, Jesus said, let us go over on the other side. So they took Jesus, they put on the boat, and as he was, and the disciple, in obedience to Jesus' command, they began making their way to the other side of the lake. Verse 37. And a great wind storm arose. And the way be the boat into the boat, and the way be into the boat, so he was already feeling. Remember, let's pay attention. Jesus told them, "Let's go on the other side." They obey him. Jesus was in the boat to steal the storm 
came. Still, the, wa- the wind and the wave arose. It's a safe passage, but it's a journey. And I think if you've been a Christian long enough, you know that from time to time, storm comes against us. Trial and tribulation attack us. The enemy will attack us. Difficulty come under many different shape and form. And as we look at our Christian walk, and I, as we look the thing that we go through in, a, in this journey, sometimes the wind of circumstance blow against us. Sometimes the, the wave of doubt, the weight of fear, attack us. See, the enemy comes and trying to do his work. The enemy comes and trying to destroy our faith because he knows that without faith we cannot please God. So he brings things in our life. It brings wind and storm to try to replace and to, to bring us to replace our faith and trust in God to replace it with fear and with out. But remember, we are in a journey. It's a journey that Jesus is with us. And Jesus allowed storms to come and allow. What are some of the purpose? What is, what is God trying to accomplish when he brings unpleasant circumstance in our life? Remember Jonah? God spoke to him and said, John, I want you to go to Nineveh, the great city. And I want you to tell them that unless they repent, I'm going to destroy the whole city. So Jonah went the opposite direction, got on a boat, and he decided that he was going to go to Tarnish. What happened? God sent a storm against him. The purpose of Jonah's storm was what? To bring him back to him. So a lot of times storms come in our life because we backslide. We turn our back against God, so we leave God no other opportunity but to bring a storm to bring us to our senses. Thank you, Jesus. What about Paul? Remember, Paul found himself in a storm. But God used a storm to open the door for him to be a witness to every person in the ship. If you read the story, the storm came, but Paul witnessed to all of them, and not even one person perished in the storm. Because of Paul pressing and Paul prayer and Paul being in God's will, God spared the life of every person that was on the boat. Now, what was the purpose of the storm that the disciples are facing? Simple. God wanted to test their faith. God, Jesus wanted to see how they were going to respond to the, to the storm that was coming their life. Verse 38. Look at, let's look at their response. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. I want you to notice the storm is raging all around them, and Jesus is sleeping. It's not fearful. Listen to me, God is always in control. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world today. It doesn't matter what people plan and scheme and divide beyond closed door. Beyond closed door. God is still God, and God is still in control, and God is still the sovereign one. Nothing happened to him without his knowledge. So Jesus was sleeping, and they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? See how quick they lost their faith? See how quick they began panicking? And they went to wake up Jesus. You know, it, might, it, it really, we are, not, we are not talking about uh, amateur. We talk about professional fishermen. We talk about people that have been in the same lake before. 
in the sea before. We talk about people that have faced storm before. But this one, it must be so intense and out of the ordinary. They, they panic. They, they became fearful. Listen to me. When a storm comes, don't lose your faith. Don't lose your patience. Trust in God. Keep trusting in him. I don't know how it's going to come true, but he will come true for you and I. He's not going to leave you, leave you in the midst of the storm. See, what the storm could not do, listen to me. Jesus sleeping. The waves are, and the, and the wind is blowing. The waves are raging. The storm cannot wake wake up Jesus. But I want you to know this. Even though the storm could not wake up Jesus, when the disciples sent, went to him and said, "Master, don't you care for us?" Jesus woke up. You know, when you find yourself in trouble, all you have to do is say, "Jesus, Jesus, Jesus." That's all it takes. And he's going to be right there. Remember the Bible said, God, God does not sleep nor slumbers. God is not like you and I that need to take a break. He needs to go on vacation. He needs to take a rest. No, 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 no. He always attentive. And his ear is always listening for the cry of his people. The cry of problem, the cry of distress. Master, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, verse 39. Then he arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. You know, it's a journey. A lot of time is marked by miraculous deliverance. They walk up Jesus. Didn't say one word. He stood up, rebuked the wind, told the sea to be calm, and there was calm. See, we must expect deliverance when we are w when we find ourselves in trouble. God is able to do anything. He's always hard to the challenge. Doesn't matter what the challenge is. He's always there. He's able to meet the challenge. And he's able to overcome the challenge. Remember the three Hebrew boy? Unless you bow down and worship the the statue, the image, we're going to cast you into the fiery furnace. King, you can say what you want to say, but one thing we're telling you, we are not bowing down and we are not worshiping your image. So they cast them into the, to the fiery furnace, remember? And when the king woke up in the middle of the night and he went to look inside the furnace, he said, wow, we, put, we, tr we threw them three inside by feet four, and the fourth one is like the son of man. See, Jesus went in the f into the fiery furnace with the three Hebrew boys because they made up their mind. We are not going to compromise our testimony. We are not go going to compromise our walk with God. We are going to remain faithful to him in this journey. And Jesus went with them into fire for it. Remember the same thing with Daniel. They cast him into the lion den. And when the king woke up and went there and he, he, he thought he was going to find, a, you know, Daniel be turned apart and his bones and, and flesh, if it was still there, scattered all over. But when he got there, then it was untouched. He said, King, don't worry. God sent his angel. And they shut the, mind, the, the, the mouth of the lion. That's what you and I might, can expect when we find ourselves in trial and tribulation. It's a journey that should be without fear. Verse 40. Verse 40. And he said to them, Why are you so fearful? You know the time we're living in right now? Fear is the number one emotion that people are manifesting all over the world, not just in America. 
People are so fearful. People are afraid that the rate of a suicide is higher than any. More people, more people, I heard, I, I don't know, but more people kill themselves. More people die from suicide than from the coronavirus. Fear. Fear. That's what fear does. Hopelessness. But listen to me. We're on a journey. Jesus with us. It promised us that we're going to make it safe to the other side. We are not exempt from storm. But Jesus is with us. All we have to do is call upon him. Trust in him. Believe in him. And keep our faith. Keep our faith. Keep our eyes on him. Let's trust in him. No matter what. It doesn't matter how dark the world might get. It doesn't matter how everything might be falling apart. Trust in him. Why are you so fearful? Abizi. They lost their faith. You know, sometimes we think we make a mistake or we lose our faith. We we, we yield to doubt and God is going to write us off. No, he's merciful. He's gracious. He knows that we are made of flesh. We know there are a lot of times we allow the flesh to take over and to overcome the spirit. But God is merciful. One thing we got to remember, listen, if I go down, he goes down too. Do you understand this? Our destiny is tied up with them. We are his children. We are his people. We are a testimony to those around us. We are a testimony to the world. If we go down, he goes down too. Because people say, well, where is there, where was there a God? What is there a God? They talk about the Jesus. They're preaching about the Jesus. They're telling what Jesus can do. Where was he? Where was he? Where was he? If my ship sinks, he will go down with us. But he will not go down with us. He will not go down with us. So we are on a journey. We are on a journey. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving. There's no standing still. Let's run this journey. Let's finish the race. Until the Lord comes. Until we go to be with them. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing us to this beautiful story, Lord. That even though we are on a journey, and the journey is not exempt from trial and tribulation and storm, you are with us all the time. You always attend them to the cry of your people. And God, perhaps there is someone here tonight who is going through a storm. I pray that you reassure them right now, or somebody that is listening to us through the live stream, reassure them tonight that you are in, that you are in control, that you know what's taking place, you know what's happening, and you're already working on the miracle deliverance that will come. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
the name for it been written in the Lamb Book of Life. Thank you, Lord. Let it be ready, Lord. Let it get ready, Lord. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Lord. Lord, have your glory right now. Shine upon them right now, Lord. about your business. 